This is my unboxing and teardown of the BQ H2 extruder. I haven't made any update to the um, Ender 3 recently. Actually, I've used it uh, reasonably little uh, since I got my Prusa Mini. And then I decided that uh, I needed something different from my printers. So what I was lacking is a direct drive extruder. So I went down, I made some research and I came up with this one. This is the BQ H2 extruder, uh, brand new. It came out with uh, their brand new printer and it packs everything you need from a uh, direct drive extruder. It includes everything from the out end to the, of course, the, the fan and everything that you need. And it is impressively small and unbelievably light. So in about 20 grams, there is everything you need. And uh, so that's what um, actually intrigued me into getting it. And uh, then, of course, I couldn't resist from tearing it apart. And that's uh, the, the objective of this video here today. So uh, let's get into it and have a look at how it looks li like on the inside. So this is the box of the BQ BQ H2 extruder. Package is pretty neat. Just cut away the plastic on top of it. So. Here it is, so there is a data sheet for people with a very good eyesight. First impression looks quite thorough, I'll give it a look later on. Package seems very neat. So let's take away this piece of foam. And here is the extruder. I can guarantee that this is really tiny. I mean, I looked at pictures, I looked at other videos. This looks impressively small. Very, very tiny. The size of this is much smaller than the usual 40 by 40 millimeters that we are used to. Then the fan is missing still, but really looks small. Let's see what else we have in the package. Rubber duck. This is the signature of the Big 3 Tech. Yeah, this is tools and a bunch of screws. Extension cable for the motor, I guess. Don't know why they have this connector here. Small fan. This is the heat cartridge. And this is the thermistor. So it's not one of these, uh, you probably see it. It's not one of these tiny, finicky, easy to snap thermistors. So it's probably we have a bit of a more inertia because of the of the steel shell, but still it's much more sturdy than the usual thermistor, I would guess. And, and finally, we have this metal shield for the fan. Let's see if it fits in my design, probably not. And then we cannot stop ourselves from uh, unscrewing this guy open. I'm going to use its own tools just uh, to see the level of quality. Yeah, they don't look super, but they even don't look crappy. So, I like this. These are not super tight. So let's take these two screws off. It looks like they're going all the way down to the motor. So you see the screws here. So let's take them off. I hope nothing comes undone from the, from the gear train. Okay, so here it comes. So we see this is the end gear of the gear train and this is the heat sink. So inside here, behind this gear, we have the gears for the filament threading and this is a very small ball bearing. 
I'm guessing there is a ball bearing. Yeah, there is a ball bearing on the other side as well, down here. And there is another ball bearing here. So everything fits on top of ball bearings, which is a thing I appreciate. And then let's see how this works. On the other side, here we have the filament and the hot end. So this is the lever. It looks quite strong. And it looks like it's machined aluminium as well. It's also a good thing. Not going to take that away, but you see here that the filament path is pretty short. So let's let's take a piece of filament and run it through. So this is the filament path. So the part that is actually outside is pretty small. I have some trouble with my light. So I would say that uh, the part of filament that is not supported is quite limited. So let's take away this sock. This is well done. Very good, nice looking uh, heat block. And here we have, I guess, this the two holes for the grub screws for the heat cartridge and the thermistor. So overall, I would say good quality. This looks like a standard nozzle, even if it does this cat out here. I'm not going to take it away. I mean, I don't think it does matter. There's a couple of holes here, which I guess is for grub screws as well to keep it uh, in place. So I'm going to leave it like that. I know this is not a all metal heat break. It's a, has a PTFE liner inside, but that's good for me. I think you can always change this to a more uh, heat resistant uh, hot end. Also the throat is not probably not very extreme, but that is not needed because of the PTFE tube inside. Good! Let's take a look at the gear train now. So we have this very small gear in the motor and then this couple of reductions. So let me see if I can take this off. This is also sitting on another ball bearing. So this guy here sits on two ball bearings on both sides. Um, this is the motor. So I guess this is a pretty standard motor. The gear is press fit inside. Not my preference, but I understand for the compact size that will work. And this is the specifications of the motor, which is BQ, marked by BQ. So let me see if I can put this back together. Putting it back together is a bit more complicated than I expected. Because I guess that I have to find the spot for the two bearings in these two holes down here. There's also a couple of notches that are not allowing you to mount it uh, upside down. So the secret for putting it back together is of course that you have to push on the lever and you have to make sure that the lever uh, makes the two gears mesh. The two gears of course that drive the, the, the filament. Just getting that close. Never use the ball end of the Allen wrench when you're applying torque, because that could damage and strip the hexagon in the screw. Here we are. So, hmm, that's not the best. And it's seized. Hmm, I'll have to open it up again and give this a look. Now it runs smoother. I would say what I just did is I loosen the screws I turned the gears and then I retightened the screws while the gear were okay. What I don't particularly like about this design is that uh, it relies on a very, very imprecise centering of the two parts. So there is no pin, nothing really that secures that you're putting those gears back in that place. So, yeah. That could be a point of improvement for the guys at BQ. Everything precisely meshed and precisely 
precisely centered with ball bearings, uh, then the ball bearings don't really tolerate uh, misalignments. Yeah, that's a bit of a pity there, I would say. Just for example, now it's locked again. And this is all for the BQH2 extruder. So to wrap it up, I think this is a very solid option. I mean, I bought it from uh, 3djake.com for 80 euros. So this is as cheap as you can get uh, these kind of things. And it's unbelievably small and unbelievably lightweight. Actually, it looks much smaller when you have it in your hands than uh, how it looks like, looks like in pictures. Um, I have to say the build quality is very good. Uh, most of it is made of machined aluminium, which is something I like. And also the gears are apparently in uh, steel. I hope they are uh, cemented or uh, uh, in a way hardened. But uh, this uh, we will see uh, along the way. But uh, overall, I think uh, it's very well built. They made this uh, clever uh, choice of doing a 7 to 1 reduction gear train. And they have made it very effectively, and there's bearings on all axles, so I think uh, they, they have uh, done quite some engineering there. And this allows them to use a super small uh, motor here, which is very, very much uh, smaller than the 40x40 40 40, uh, motors that we are used to. So overall, I think they made a very good job in making it this thing a miniature and making it very lightweight. Uh, on the improvement side, I would have to say there's a couple of things. So one is that they have a PTFE liner on the heat brake. So yeah, it's a bit of, uh, let's say, the cheap choice. I think it's, in a way, it's not going to be an issue for me. I'm not printing high uh, temperature materials on this printer, so uh, not really a problem. On the other hand, it's, it's I would say, pretty simple to upgrade. So um, let's say it's a minor uh, thing to say. Actually, the thing that bugged me is the fact that they didn't put any uh, locating pins connecting the gear train to the to the motor assembly. So the gears tend to, to, to seize if you're not very careful in putting this thing back together. And you would ask, why do you need to take it off, out in the first place? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, the screws are actually packing the whole thing together. So if you want to turn the connector of the motor here, then you have to disassemble the whole thing. The second thing, of course, if you, if you have, is that if you have a jam, you will have to take it apart and fix the jam. So I think these two things combined make the likelihood of having to open it not so unlikely. So I would say, um, if I can give a suggestion to BQ, just uh, drill a couple of holes for locating pins, put the pins together, and that's going to be it. So I didn't have the uh, chance to test it yet, so I actually just started it up and it looks like uh, it's uh, working as intended, but I'm going to do some testing before I can say if it is actually making an improvement in the print quality. What I'm expecting most of it, most of all, is to have a direct drive, so this is what I wanted to get and this is what I got in the end. So. I would say, having said that, I think it's a pretty solid option, uh, considering also that the price for equivalent alternatives for other manufacturers are way more expensive, probably double or more. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the purchase. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to subscribe, you can get uh, notifications of my uh, newest videos, and that will be very appreciated from my side. And that's it for today, and until next time.